welcome to part three of grafting trees. So in part one, we talked about that we graft in order to get things that breed true and trees that are of the size that we want them to be. In part two, we looked at the cambium layer, which is what we're trying to join when we graft. And we looked at how to tell that a tree is waking up for spring, which we need for certain types of graft, including the one we're going to show today. In this section, I'm going to show how to make the cuts, how to join the two pieces of wood, and how to prepare that tree for planting. The equipment that you need is really ridiculously simple. You need your root stock of choice. Repeat, I use one called MM106, which produces a tree three to four meters high, three to four meters wide. You need your scion, your piece of growing wood that you've cut from the tree that you like. You need a thin, clean, sharp knife. I use a type of knife called an opener. Very cheap, priced around a tenner. This is a garden knife variety because you can really hook your fingers in there to get a good grip. If you don't know how to sharpen a knife or your shears or your axe or your saw, ask me in the comments and I'll do a short video that shows you. This needs to be razor sharp for grafting. Parasecateurs is handy to cut both your root stock and your scion to roughly appropriate length. And we're also going to use this. This is grafting tape. It's weird, it's stretchy and waxed. And when you sort of stretch it out, it will grip to itself. And it will help to hold the graft in place while the two pieces of living wood join. Because it's stretchy, as the tree grows, it stretches with it. There's no need to ever remove proper grafting tape. It's not expensive, a few quid for a roll that will do umpteen trees. If you haven't got it, in days of old, people produced a wax uh, made of a combination of beeswax, turpentine, other ingredients. I can show you how to do that if you want. Um, you can even use a more rigid tape and remove it when the joint has worked. There's lots of ways around it. Don't be held back from lack of kit. You can do a perfectly acceptable graft with your pen knife and what you have to hand. Please understand, as I'm trying to go through this channel with my lovely wife Fiona, one of the things we want to show you is this stuff doesn't have to be expensive. You don't have to buy tons of kit. Do a little research and you can be as self-reliant as you choose to be. Anyway, sorry, that's me going off on one. Let's get into it. You won't have to look at me. You can look at some wood, which will be much nicer. And we'll talk about how to do this graft. So, I bought these rootstocks. I am learning to produce our own, but they're not mature enough yet for me to start taking living rootstocks from. So I bought these from a reputable supplier called Ashridge Nurseries. They supply them fairly long so that you can decide what length you want. I don't want my graft to be all the way up here. I just want a small piece of rootstock then grafted to the scion. So I'm going to get rid of initially all of that. That's waste. What I then want to do is cut the end of this at an angle and I will cut a piece of the scion wood at a matching angle so that they join. And you want a flat, clean cut. Hence why I said your knife must be sharp. So, we go in there. What we want to do is cut right across, not sort of hollow out, but cut one neat flat line at that sort of an angle right across. Here's the cut. I'd like you to look at it carefully. I'd like you to see that it's flat. 
it's at a steep angle and if you look very carefully can you see the green cambium layer between the bark and the inner wood that layer must touch between the scion and the rootstock. Sounds terribly precise. Honestly, when you've done a few, it's not that hard to make work. So what I'm going to do now is make a similar cut on the base of the scion wood when I've trimmed the scion wood to size. I'll show you that bit next. I do feel like I should uh, be making some Harry Potter references here in the video. Uh, wandering around with twigs like this. Okay, this is our cyan wood. I'm going to state the obvious, because I made mistakes when I first did this. But, first point is, it has buds on it. You can see these buds. There's one where my thumb is pointing. The buds point upwards. Don't try and graft it upside down when you've forgotten which way's up. And yes, I have done it, <laughs> okay? Every time they say something's idiot-proof, I prove them wrong. There's another point at the bottom of this, and this is where the sign came out from the tree. There's a curve. I don't want a curve. I want to graft a straight piece of wood. So, let's get rid of the curve. Now, all we need for growing is a couple of buds. And you can see there's one here and one here. All you need is one. But if one doesn't grow well, you've got a choice of a second. I like to have two buds and then I can pinch out the one that's not growing as I want. And the new growth, the new stem, will grow up from there. And you can see there's one here, and there's one there. That's all we need, a piece that size. So in this, I've got enough wood to produce two, maybe even three, if I was very careful, new apple trees from a single young branch. So I'm going to cut it in the middle, and then I'm going to cut an angle in order that we can get a complete join between this scion and the rootstock. So this is the piece I'm going to work with. And I have this piece left. Okay, I've made that cut and it's important to try and keep those cuts to a single sharp cut. Although I find just at the end you need to tidy up a little bit. And what I want to show you now is how neatly those two pieces of wood will go together. And that's because we took our time in selecting a scion that was the right diameter for the rootstock and we made the cut cleanly. Okay, look how lovely and green that wood is. And both the scion and the rootstock. That shows us nice, lively wood. Okay, what I want to do now is put another cut about there, about a third of the way down on both pieces of wood cutting vertically so that you'll get a cut that looks about like that. And when we push the two together, the little tongue, the saddle that it forms, will lock into place and will hold the graft together. So what I'm going to do is find a point with a knife blade that's about a third of the way down and literally rock knife blade in like that. Can you see? I will do the same on the scion. I'm currently doing this to the rootstock. And what I'm doing by cutting into the heartwood like that is I am creating a little split that those two pieces will interlock when we push the graft together. It's difficult to show you can see it there, and I'm going to pry it apart quite consciously and deliberately to make a little space for the other piece to move into. 
Right, I'm going to try and film the joining of a graft. And I'm going to apologise to you for my difficulty in doing so. It's very hard to look at a viewfinder, hold two pieces of wood, talk about it, and manipulate things all at the same time. So forgive me for being a klutz. All right, at the front here, let's think of that as a tongue. And where the knife blade is, there's a notch. And what the art of grafting is, is to take... tongue of one and slide it into the notch of the other just like that and if you've got your diameters right those cambium layers will line up and with a little support and you can see it's tight a little support while they knit together you can see now why it's important that we're in the vigorous growing season those cambium layers will fuse and the rootstock and the scion will become a single tree. Sorry my hands are moving a little bit. I have to be zoomed in a long way to make this even vaguely visible. This is about my fourth attempt. So I hope you can see that and I hope it shows that all we're talking about here is two diagonal cuts, two little cut notches, push them together. And the skill, to some extent, is understanding the tree anatomy selecting the right pieces of wood and doing it at the right time of year. So what I'm doing here is I've taken a piece of grafting tape, I'm going to wrap it on itself a couple of times, and all I'm doing is turning the rootstock, stretching the tape slightly, and then at the end, I'll just tie it off. And what that tape will do will keep any muck out of the graft and support the graft while the two pieces of wood fuse. So there we have it. We have a nice deep pot. We have our newly grafted tree in the pot. A little label and on one side tells us it's an apple and Ashmead's kernel variety. And on the other, the type of root stock that we've used, MM106. We give that a good drink, and hopefully, very shortly, we'll be able to watch a new apple tree develop. Whilst I know I've talked a bit about technique in all of this, I hope you've seen there's nothing here really to mystify. It is literally a question of find two sticks that are the same diameter, check they're both starting to grow, make two clean cuts, two nicks, and bind them with a bit of stretchy plastic. That's tree grafting for you. It's that simple. Easy enough to find apple trees to take signs from. You can buy a few rootstocks from places online and have a go. What have you got to lose? I and mean, in a few years, you can have an orchard that you've created yourself. I hope you feel like you've got enough information to research further and have a go. I hope it's at least been interesting. If it has, please click the thumbs up button. It makes a huge difference to us. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll talk soon.